Welcome to Winternomics TV. Your stream will begin shortly. Loading in five. Welcome to Winternomics TV. Your stream will begin shortly. Loading in five. Welcome to Winternomics TV. Your stream will begin shortly. Loading in five. Just open the bar. 
Welcome to Winternomics TV. Your stream will begin shortly. Loading in five. Welcome to Winternomics TV. Your stream will begin shortly. Loading in five. Welcome to Winternomics TV. Your stream will begin shortly. Loading in five.
Welcome to Winternomics TV. Your stream will begin shortly. Welcome to Winternomics TV. Your stream will begin shortly. Welcome to Winternomics TV. Your stream will begin shortly.
Welcome to Winternomics TV. Your stream will begin shortly. Loading in five. Ah, excellent. Thanks. Okay, now. Alright. Got the jowls in there? Okay. Got the jowls in there. All right. All right. Everything's good. Everything's good. All right, guys. We are back on part two of our adventure. What happened? Oh, fuck. What just happened here? They don't hear our audio? They hear, oh, God. Please don't say that shit, bro. What? KJ, no audio. That system thing. Uh oh. Say something, KJ. Oh, Jesus. Hold on. You were audio four now. Uh, do you that system thing you did before? Remember your audio? No, the system mic? Um. Hold on. Was it me that's supposed to be saying the system or you? They can hear you or not? All right. KJ, say something else. Hello, hello, hello. Can y'all hear KJ? I think I hear you. I see your, I see your mixer. Yeah, they should now. You guys hear KJ? You, they should hear you. I see your audio. It's uh, very faint, very quiet. All right, Turn on. volume up. All right, how about now? Test again. Pump it up. I can't be up screaming up in here. My jowls can't take it. Can you guys hear KJ? Can you check Better. Out? Yeah, we're good. We're good. All right. And now I lost all my questions because that fucking window crashed. So that's lovely. Fucking safe, bro. <laughs> One sec, guys. I gotta get the fucking. I can't even see any questions. Again. KJ, I'm not saying anything. Somebody asked me a question about yields. I saw somebody ask something else in there. Can you look and scroll up? I had them ask some questions, but the window crashed that had it. That sucks. I say my my video is yeah, guys. This shit is is fucked up. What is? It? I don't know. They say my video is delayed too. Your video is delayed because our feed is delayed. Your audio won't match your mouth because you're on my stream. This is delayed to my stream. Same as when I'm watching you. Mm -hmm. Why is yield important, and what's a good yield in investing? Right. So. I think it, I'm going to give you a here. Hold on. One sec. Let me get back to uh, the question box. I lost all of it. 
Well, you know what, Katie's going to handle all the questions for me. I can't see him. Mm -hmm. um, something just fucking happened. Okay, now it's back. I don't know what the hell's going on. Yeah, guys, if you had a question, retype it now. <clears throat> My bad, man. Yeah, something crazy has happened. I don't know. What the fuck's going on here? Say my video is choppy. All right. Well, it shouldn't be. Well, it's a, it's a catching an encoded stream, so it's not gonna be the best. But you're there. Um, yeah, I'm here. This guy says BTC Outlook, please. <laughs> Didn't you see the first sign? We were talking about it. I'm talking about BTC every time. How how do I escape the cringe fractal? I don't know what. What's the cringe fractal? Is. What is that? That's some new like shit. A, it sounds like a yeah. worthy name. I'm interested. What's the cringe fact? Yeah. Teach me. Teach me, Seymour. <laughs> Feed me, Seymour. <laughs> you know that, huh? <laughs> I know. You. I'm a boomer. You're what? You're a boomer? <laughs> don't, don't date this, Katie. Don't date this. Spirit of the bull. So when price moves parabolically up and volume is picking up, it's late money, right? Oh, wow. What's really high volume in a candle or multiple candles that don't move as much? Accumulation. Oh, thanks, Henry. You got them all. Okay. Okay. I see that question. Your question. Okay. And then what's the other one? Um, uh, if we are starting to see the retail get interest in the market, does it mean that we can see the end of the secular bull? Okay. How do you check yourself so you don't leave an asset too early, but don't also feel like you're becoming for it? Okay. Can you explain what the world is chasing yields lower and they are early? Okay, they are early. That's a probably wrong term, but okay. All that stuff I can answer. All right, cool. It's a good starting point. Let's do this shit. <coughs> um, let me freeze this. Stop doing weird things. Doing weird things. Pause you. Stop doing weird. All right, okay, do the job. Let's go there. Okay, don't know when that's exposed all of a sudden. What the fuck is that? Oh. Um. All right, we go to the chance of audio vanishes again. So I'm gonna get him a test here again. So chart talk, and I don't see audio for KJ. KJ, say something. What's up? What's okay, up? Okay, let's see that. Okay, cool. All right, you're good. You're quiet again. Let me fix that. All right, talk again. Hello. Yep, you're good. Hello out there. All right. World. We got KJ on uh, an oversight of the charts here. So <laughs> it looks like this dude looks like not. <laughs> I won't tell. <laughs> that's right, girl. He sent me one bit. You know why that little baby comes to me sent me one bit? Because that's baby money, girl. <laughs> Henry's name. <laughs> In Henry's name. <laughs> and I, 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 I'll pay a bit for every jump kick. <laughs> Inside jokes are fun like that. Anyway, all right. So we got VChain on the screen. First question was, um, you know, what's a good yield? Uh, that's a really broad question, right? Yield is going to really be dependent on um, the amount of risk you assume, and so risk-adjusted yields are what you need to talk about. If you're dealing with like treasury for the U.S. government, you're dealing with gold in, in a foreign countries then obviously that's the that's your risk-free rate of your nation right the only way your country's not paying its back its bonds if your country fails so there is not a lot of risk associated with taking bonds from the government of your respective nation compared to anything else in the country risk in america at the risk-free level is different than risk free level at in argentina so with respect to like america we use this as a base model uh u.s treasury are, pretty safe bet that the government's not going to go broke and pay you back. It hasn't had that problem ever. So because of that, you know, they don't have to pay you much return. Just like your bank too. They'll pay you like, you know, 1%, no money. Um, and it's because it doesn't come with a lot of risk. So we know that you know, risk reward is a thing, right? And the more risk you assume, you should be entitled to more reward. That's the idea. So the central bank, China central bank, your main bank or your treasuries that have no risk with them come with like the least amount of yield on them because of that. Now you go buy something like a junk bond, you know, a company that like literally is on the fringes of going under, they're going to have much higher yields because you as an investor aren't going to take 1% for a company that could fail. You're going to lose your entire capital investment and make no return. So you're going to demand higher yields just because the company's riskier. And that's a really simplistic way to think about it. 
So in real estate, another easy way to think about it, right? If you go to your like your primo houses in the neighborhood, like, your primo houses, like a million dollar houses where like, you know, movie stars live. That's like tier A real estate. That's the, the fastest appreciating, biggest asset Cass, in the market. Do you have ability to turn your mic up? Is it quiet? Okay. That's what they're saying. I'm actually just a little distant from it. Usually put the focus. No, but I can I can hear you fine. I think it's it may have something to do with the setting. I am here. Let me put it to where Look at that pat oh, can you find the power stone? That's what's up. <laughs> I have the power stone, this is don't worry, I'm, 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 louder, you. I'm louder Expecting than you. That. Huh? You're saying I'm I'm coming in louder than you are now. Are you? Yeah. Okay, hold on. That is solvable. I should be loud as fuck now. How about now, guys? Let me know. I should be loud. So yeah, so let's just have this conversation. I probably need both comments. So when you're dealing with risk, right? If I'm gonna go into like a shithole, like if I'm gonna go into the ghetto and I'm gonna buy like a bunch of houses where I've got like you know high high crime area, um, the people who are renting the properties aren't gonna maintain the collateral at all. They're gonna fucking like level the house. Then I need as much return pumped out of the house fast as possible to get as much payback as I can because I'm assuming crazy risk. So I'm gonna need to buy real estate north of 10, 12 capitalization rates, making things easy for you. Cap is what you get after all expenses of the property are taken out, so it's your net operating, what you really make. Um, so you're going to back out your vacancy, you're going to back out your maintenance, you're going to back out all that shit. And then what do I really make after tax insurance? That's cap. So that's your house's yield. So if I'm going to go to the hood and I'm going to demand a 10, 12% yield on my property, then if I go into a tier A neighborhood where the house is worth a million bucks, the rent isn't going to move up linearly with the housing price. So the tier A asset, it appreciates faster. You make more money in the asset as the market inflates, but you don't get paid as high a yield on the house per rent on cost of owning the asset because the asset is safer. So you are going to demand a lower yield, probably experience greater capital appreciation. In the hood, you're gonna want more yield, pump out the house quicker on a payback for that risky investment, and you're gonna probably experience less capital appreciation. So yield is really relative. Um, respect to, it, respect, you have to deal with what the uh, risk assumption is to define yield. It's not like 10% is good. It is about that 10% is good in, in substitution of what else I could have for the same level of risk. So risk adjusted um, yield is what's important to consider. In a world where like yields are diving down, you know, and sovereign yields are going towards zero to negative, uh, asset prices have an inverse relationship with yield. So how can we do this and not confuse the shit out of it? What do you think? I like this combo, it's a great combo. So let's see if we can do something on the screen and draw it in and make life simple. Um, all right, so let's use a bond as an example. You guys don't know bonds probably. I'm not gonna make assumption do you may or may not. So the United States gives you a bond, thousand dollars, right? They issue the bond at 1,000 bucks. So the bond cost me a thousand bucks. All right, and they say the bond is gonna pay you 5% coupon rate. So that's not your yield, right? This is a coupon rate. So that means the bond is going to have a $50 payment. And this is to make it annual to make life easier for ourselves, right? So this guy's gonna pay me 50 bucks every year. That's some good ass free hand right with a touch pad, bitches. Yeah, that's pretty good, man. I'm impressed. And jigs. <laughs> Fucking missed it. <laughs> Fucker, shut up. <laughs> All right, so this bond pays you 50%. Now. Your yield at this minute is 5%, but now the bond enters the market, right? And the United States government ends up in a position where they face a recession and they're like, it looks like they could have pressure to pay back their debts. The risk of having money owed to you by the government of the United States is becoming more risky. So market investors are like, fuck that. I want to get wrecked on my thousand. I put in this bond. I'm dumping that thing. And this thing fucking tanks. So like 800 bucks, right? The bond dumps to 800 bucks. Well, the coupon rate is still 5%. That's what it pays. So what this is going to have the effect of doing is fucking driving up the yield on the bond. Because if I think the U.S. government is running into trouble, I'm not going to settle for 5% anymore. I don't want that fucker to thousand. It's going to get sold to the point that people go, you know, the United States didn't look good at fucking a 5% yield, but now it's paying 50 bucks on fucking, you know, 800 bucks. 
what's the yield on that? That's um, what, 15%? Uh, 16%, right? That's a 16% yield. So the yield is moving in terms of the price, the, the, the amount you get paid. So if this is my property and my rent was 50 bucks or 500 bucks a month and my property was 10,000, right? If the property tanks the, and the rent stays the same, my yield went up. The property's gonna tank when the market is basically getting weaker and there's deflationary pressure. So I'm gonna demand more fucking return because I'm experiencing greater capital risk in the asset. So your yields move inversely with the price of the asset. So in recessions and shit like that, where increasing risk happens, asset prices take a fucking shit and the yields with rise at sky high rates. So when real estate crashed in 2009, you had $200,000 houses that went to 20 Gs in some parts of Orlando. And those guys were like, you know what, like seven and eight percent yields shot through 20. That's a mispriced asset. A brick and mortar hard asset that's paying north of fucking 18, north of the usury cap is fucking mispriced. They, at that point, the asset actually could have been fucking built back. Uh, the asset was going to cost you more to uh, build back than what you could buy it for. The reconstruction costs that we were seeing at some points in 2009, the house was upside down to what it cost the insurance company to build it back if it caught fire. That's a mispriced asset, and yields are ridiculous for a brick-and-mortar hard, hard asset that hedges inflation. So that's within a, also a, a, a range, too, um, you know, a statistical probable range that it's occupied for a lifetime. Has real estate assets ever been to 20% in America? You know, what's the high side of the market? And so historically, what's the range that these uh, risk assets actually move between is going to help you define the boundaries of your relative argument. Um, when we say that you know you're chasing the assets to negative yields now, what's going to happen is right. If if asset prices and interest rates are you know inversely related, high high interest rates are going to be fucking an anchor to asset prices. Warren Buffett's the one who made that point. He said it's like gravity. High interest rates will drag down asset prices because if the U.S. government pays you more money, then I don't need to take as much risk to get a higher yield from the government. Then that house is fucking expensive. That's what's going to happen. So if the U.S. government raises its yields up from fucking 1% to like 5% and my property is getting 7 the fuck am I want that house for? I can get no risk and get paid the government two points off that. That house better go to fucking like 11 which means the house is going to have to tank in order for the fucking yield to skyrocket. Once you're dropping yields to the floor, though, right, the opposite is true. If this coupon payment doesn't move and I need this thing to reach fucking 1%, this fucking bond is going to have to hit 5000 so if everybody in the world is chasing negative yields and dropping yields towards zero, asset prices will moon to reduce uh, yields on those assets to next to nothing. So asset prices will rise and yields will fall. So a chase for negative rate rates down to zero means that the world's assets are going boom, which is why central banks lower asset prices to fucking curb deflation and then they do whatever quantitative easing programs or fiscal policies necessary and the monetary policy, policy is necessary to slow down the deflationary cycles that they themselves create, which is part of the business cycle. So that's a really nerdy, long-winded answer. Did you guys take all that in? That covers yields and that covers like you know risk-adjusted yield um, perception. So we, there is no number that's good. It's in terms of substitution what you could get. In a world like we are today, where there's not such great interest rates in your bank anymore, um, you can only get the best thing you can get in terms of what's available. So. A person in the Netherlands might only be able to see on a B-class property, they might only be able to see 4.5%, maybe 3 dollars It's just barely above inflation. It's not really anything good, but the asset price is extremely high and likely to go even higher if the rate situation gets any worse. Because remember, your property is a risk asset. Even if the central bank is negative, there's a differential between the, the risk-free rate and what's going on in the market that has any, any perceivable grade of risk. So maybe that B-class property runs a 4.5% spread on the risk-free rate of the central bank. When the central bank was running one, that property was five and a half. When the central bank goes down to negative one, the set, that property is going to go down to fucking three and a half, which means the asset prices will move to keep the yields where they are. So the central bank has a lever on asset prices through the, cent through the risk rate. Mm -hmm. um, that's probably one of the most thorough, detailed, nerdy-ass answers you're going to get. And this is supposed to be a more fun show, so that's like really technical. Ask me something sillier that's easy. <laughs> that's like so nerdy, I can't like when do that with being funny. Much? I can't do that like being funny. That's like a lot of nerdy crap. No, no, I've got to watch that again. That's, no, that's really good shit. Well, that's good for you. That's, that's how yields work. So, and then risk adjusted deals, understand that. There's far more context you could give, but uh, it get was really too long and boring. So, that should help you guys understand that a little bit. ROW Jimmy says, What were you going to say at the end of last wrecked hour about Litecoin before oh. you shut that shit down? 
<laughs> Damn, KJ. All right, we'll talk about Litecoin. I'm going to cover uh, Spiritable asking a bond question. So I'll give him the bond question. So I have VeChain in here. Um, let's get something to get a little bit more. Okay, so let's just look at this like volume move in this anyway. Doesn't matter what it is. Uh, stop moving crazy. Look at volume, right? Volume fades in a shockwave, and then basically you have a local Ivy what? <laughs> Fucking loud ass bitch. <laughs> right? You run out of people that want to play in a specific range. That's what goes on in a shockwave, right? People want to fucking create a localized monopoly that nobody's ready to play. Run psychologically fucked if you can mark their asses up. Get another set of people involved and do it again. Mark their asses down if they fucking enter the wave. Shockwave, see if it's going on again. Fuck you, you still want to buy. Fuck you, you still want to buy. And so on, right? So that's what's going on. Mark up the supply crash, right? So as you look at this wave structure, what happens is the parabolic, the climax, volume happens at the climax of the, of the price structure. And you can see that price actually, oops, I'll just use this thing. Notice this like move here, price like moons up to, uh, as the price is rising into the top of it, it actually starts to rise. That's because that's your late money, right? So you're moving because you've got almost no one that wants to play in the shock wave and the market begins with the person who's cornered the supply. And once they mark it up, the late money that wants to chase a rapidly rising asset that now has fear of loss that enters emotionally at speed do it uh in ex in an exponentially growing fashion right they're emotional so they're not logical they're coming in faster and faster and faster to chase in whatever resolution this is and as soon as they do that they basically overload the market in that location for anybody who want to play because right the market's a zero-sum system there's only so many people at every range that want to play Right. Everybody who thinks your house is a great deal here at 250,000 bucks aren't the people who thought it was a great deal back in the days when it was 150,000 bucks. These people are like, man, that's real expensive. But the people go, man, this is great. 250, that's like a great starter home. I'm in. And then the market takes a dump like, dude, 225, I can't believe I'm losing. Dude, I got to sell this house. I can't believe I want to be broke. And you kick them out and then you move up to another range. And the guy who's here is like, fuck, the house is 320. But a new set of people are like, boy, 320? This is a great deal. I'm a hot. And they show up. I'm gonna hot. <laughs> so when you have a different location where different people feel the same way, right? These people are not oops. These people are not the same people. This is your grandparents who thought houses at 150 made sense. This is your mom's generation. And she thinks that fucking houses up here at 250 are a great deal, you know, 20 years later. And when you show up on the scene, you're like, I'm just getting out of college, man, it's 2020. This house looks wonderful at 350. Different populations of people in different localized monopolies are what you're watching, right? So everyone has a belief structure, and not infinite people are willing to participate at every price. Different perceptions in the market. So these people have a different idea about this being a good deal. Here, it's too late for them, but the people who FOMO into this region go, hey, I love this price, but they're emotional. A little bit of a uh, dumps downside action kicks you out of the bull flag, and when it leaves them, some may be planning to buy in again, highly emotional, and new participants who fucking sit the whole time and let this go by, FOMO into this guy. And all that happens is, is that you have an exponential growth of volume because it takes greater amounts of money to buy greater amounts of units at ever increasing prices. So the only way you can ever see rising volume with rising prices is because there's an illogical state in the market. So it's doomed to fail. Because if every region only has X amount of participants that are gonna play, an exponential growth of demand over supply in the localized region will soon exhaust all available participants in moments. So it's an unsustainable thing. Kind of like a, a bird or a plane flying at 90 degrees, it's going to stall. So you will see that basically volume basically ramps up into the climax because you're exhausting all available participants at that local range. Does that answer your question, Spirit Bowl? I can't get a recall of that now. Let's get that. KJ, there's a lot of words. What up? <laughs> Sorry. So, They're asking me really wordy questions. What the fuck? No, yeah. that's good. No, I'm listening. Yeah, that's me college questions like, what's up with the really fucking good. Bitcoin chain? Ask me something fucking retarded. What are you guys asking me? <laughs> Crazy high level shit. Next you're going to ask me, can you explain what, to me? What, the... what, causes, what causes the rapid selling? What causes what? The rapid selling from crypto on that. Fear. Rapid selling? What causes rapid anything? Emotions. Rapid selling is obviously fear. Why don't people buy back when it reaches the relative low? Uh, what is a relative low? Relative low is only understood in hindsight, right? So one of the things about looking at a chart as it unfolds over time is 
in relative lows are only understood relatively, so you'll need something higher to tell you it was low. This isn't low yet, unless in the future this guy becomes low. Remember, that's the thing about trends. As they unfold, a low can become a high later if the price keeps falling, right? And a high can become a low if the price keeps rising. So you can sell low and buy back even lower in a downtrend, or you can buy high and sell, and, and sell even higher in an uptrend. So the, the old adage of buying low and selling high is also a relative thing. Looking back in hindsight, I could say I could have a low here and sell here, so I bought low and sold high, or, right, when this thing's down at a certain level and it shows it's in an uptrend, let's see if it ever is. Okay, that's a small resolution, but let's uh, get a resolution we can get a trend to look at, right? This is the thing about it. You don't know until hindsight if you keep looking back to say, well, this is relatively high to there. That's meaningless, though, to you because you can't act on the past. The only thing you can act on is what could possibly unfold in the future, and what you know is at this moment, if we're in trend, the statistics are not likely that the last candle in this is going to be found by me. So a trend in motion, like inertia, is, is likely to stay in motion, right? So if that's the case, and I can participate, today's high can be tomorrow's low uh, if the price continues to advance. So that's the way to buy low and sell high, is not necessarily to buy low in what you can see in your hindsight vision, but what is statistically likely to occur because of the motion of price and the chances that you can find the very last candle at the top or the bottom. Not being likely, right? We know that waves are, are practically similar in all time frames, right? You can play waves in each resolution and it, it's the same thing, right? Price is always doing the same thing. So as price advances, all you want to understand is like, if this thing's in trend, right? There are a lot of positions that at the moment, this point in time, this point in time, this point in time, this point in time, all of these are local lows, relatively speaking to what unfolded forward into the future. So it's a perspective issue. People think that I should have had this bottom, but I can't believe it left me. That's okay. There's a pretty clean shockwave right here that you can fucking see, right? Pretty structural. Clears the wick high. And actually fucking stalls right here in this area, right? Stalls right here, and does a dump wick and breaks up and then flags. You can play anywhere in there. You don't have to be anywhere down here. You're just trying to define your risk and not die if you get it wrong. So you need to know where your stop is before you touch this thing, how much of your account you want to risk, and be able to have repeat the feed if it doesn't work out exactly right. If he wicks you out, cool. Wait for him to go through another low, fuck the plan again up there if it has to be. Let them reset and define risk, you know, again, in the entry of the time. So, I probably should use all the same color. That gets a little bit nice. So, V-chain, V-chain example. All right, so, let's see. And, okay, was that the last of, uh, those are pretty technical questions you guys asked. Let's see, how do you check this out? Oh, um, somebody asked, okay, V asked, uh, how do you check yourself to not leave an asset too early? Um, really simply, you know, do I, I call lots of crazy targets that are incredibly accurate, but unless, you know, when the price gets those targets, a lot of times I'll look, look to manage risk and take off some things, but forget about establishing targets, right? If you can predict the area that's going to go. One thing you know is, um, we'll put this on long resolution. So we'll just use this V chain. This is a good example, right? And this guy's nice and structured. So, this is obviously really thin. I'm not telling you to go do V chain, but this is for example six. Right? This is your last low that goes and puts in the high, and then he fucking recoils and then you know flags. And this range he's parabolic here, climaxes, dumps. What you know is he's likely to go to a fucking shockwave, you know, across this whole range, wherever the fuck it happens. So you see this, and you're like, okay, he's accumulating, he's doing his bullshit, and he's got you know low volume, he's dying off. You can see the volume like completely going to shit. That's really good. Stop it. Paintbrush. Like that. All right, you can see the volume die, and like I told you, everybody who's available to play dies. That's when that you have a localized monopoly and you can start to raise prices. Because if everybody else is inside your own view chain, right, and I'm the bookmaker and I want to raise prices, and you start to dump on me right as I raise prices, I not only have my whole supply to get rid of, I've got your stupid ass selling to me giving me more which is going to cause them to probably ram it up your ass. And if you've ever sold into a pump, you probably go faster because stupid, you don't realize how they work. 
you sell it to a guy who's got a corn in supply and give him more supply, he's going to run your ass over because now you got to sell his shit and your shit. And your shit's probably at a shitty-ass price compared to where you have it. So that's a, that's a memo. Anyway, once you're in this thing, let's say you buy the breakout here and you define your risk just under that last level, right? All you can really do is, right, if I don't know how far VChase capacities are to go, I know that, like, um, let's do this. I'll give you a cool strategy that's easy, right? So, like a long position. So let's just say a long position is, like, we'll make a sloppy just to make this simple. And you can just put, like, a stop down there, right? You get a little room to do big people. You can define risk a lot of ways. Like, so you define your risk and this is what I'm going to lose. And if it goes down here, I'll get out and I'll try again later. Cool. The good rule of thumb is, you know, once you get something that, like, if you get something like this, and honestly, you get like four, five X your initial risk, you can sell 25% or 20% of your position and pay off all of this if he comes back and gets you. Then you can let it just do whatever the fuck you want. It's a free roll. Or you can take off enough to actually book some profits. You can take off half of five X and then you book a small amount of gains. And the other half can be allowed to kind of proceed. Um, as, it vent- as it keeps on going, you may even want to, to, you know, bring up your stops. And now you fucking have no risk of loss and you fucking have booked some gains. And let it do what it's going to do. And you don't have to sit there and have the whole position go the whole way. You know, if you get fucking, um, let's, let's put this in a bigger time frame. So let's just say you have V chain and you sold half your shit at 5x. Right? Um, and god damn it, that'd be crazy. So, what's that? It's 10x, right? So, half your shit is sold already at 5x, and then up here, you can sell half of what you have left, right? You can go down to 25% of your original position. Because if you sell 25% of your original position at 10x, you basically made two and a half times your risk, right? You made 2.5x your original risk. So that's kind of how you think about it. You could have the last 25% run, fucking whatever it does. It does a shitcoin style fucking move, you get 20x. That's a kind of good way to scale out of it without fucking fucking yourself in the ass. Um, better than that, any follow the trend structure if you're a good short, you suggest your stops and follow it. And you're not going to find your way to like the lowest low. But you fucking do something like this and stop manage it, go down to low, you know, you're out here. Versus the time there and you're out there. You can define a trade going back the other way. So you could short this guy on a breakdown up here or something, you know, if you had, if this is a shortable asset, he breaks that down or whatever. And then when he weighs down and recoils, you know, you have to stop set back with your initial risk was, if it's up there, it's up there, whatever. And then as he begins to make wave structure low, he has a low, as soon as he fucking takes this out, you have the definition of the down wave there, you can bring down the stop to this level. And as soon as he recall sets the slow and it takes out the low again, right? Trend is continued. Stops can come down here. And you can basically just move with the wave until the wave kicks you out. And you don't have to guess shit. You just let the wave be what it's going to be and let it unfold across time. That's a, there's a, many ways to go about doing it. But these are some simple ideas for you to, to think about. Not the only way you can do it. Not telling you what exact amount of your capital you put in there. This is probably to your own specific risk appetite. But these are just ideas. Instead of getting caught up in your ego and can I tell you exactly what price it's going to be, I think it's got to be fucking BTC 9000, any of that. Let price do what it's going to do. It's going to be right and you're going to fucking be lucky if you get to the right spot where it is. But if you are patient and you let price breathe and you let waves move the way they move and learn how that works, then you can participate in a trend without really knowing much of anything. You just need to know it's in trend. That's really it. All the news that we're going on v chain here and all of what they fucking hypothesized there and all that's going on here, who gives a fuck? It's going up here, it's fucking going down there, and it's going back up again, right? You can just use a simple fucking trend line. When is this thing a good idea? I don't even know what this is. This is the fucking shizzle, right? Up to down, down, down. <laughs> fucking whatever. This is a not rocket science. Oops. Right? Simple trend lines. Respect the fucking wave. Don't draw through prices. Make sure you connect the high. To the lowest high that you can find that doesn't cut these prices that generates the next low. And there's your fucking trend, right? He's out of a downtrend there, he's out of a downtrend there. He doesn't define an uptrend until he goes over this shit though. So it's a really fucking half hearted fucking um, you know, counter wave and overall macro down wave. And he fails this uptrend there, so fucking price. Like, look, the trend lines, do you really need that much? Fuck the news. Downtrend. Possibilities, exit downtrend, let's see what he does. He's hold the base real quick. I might get lucky. 
He does he pops here. This looks fucking interesting. Hell, I can take a trade if he breaks that high, put a stop down there. He fucks me. Well, what the fuck here? He's back in downtime. Let's play that. So if this suckers you and you define risk, your win should, your losses should be small, your win should be big, and the directionality is the tide. If you play with the trend, the amplitude of the moves that you win in are going to be much larger than the ones you lose in. And so you can make you can lose a little, make a lot. And that's really what your career is going to be built on, is, is being consistent in your habits and allowing your risk rewards and the statistics of your fucking executions to basically determine your career. That's it right there. Okay. Man, it's like nothing but nerdy questions. This wasn't happening in KJ's segment. What the hell? <laughs> fucking killing me. All right. Is that, uh, that covers all of that. Um, damn, well, kind of, kind of the asshole that. Uh, have we been on 52 minutes? How is that even fucking possible? I haven't done anything yet. Alright, let's talk about Litecoin. Somebody asked me about that. <laughs> <sighs> fucking crazy. So, Litecoin again. These are all of what we've been annotating, um, the whole year. If you've been following us along, right? See these fucking moves breaking out, pumping up. This was a big level to watch. This was a level that you broke apart, tested it, generated the climax high. Then fucking absolutely fucking ate shit back down to the ground. And you're still in the process, right? And we talk about trends. I mean, this will be a V chain, right? High that generates the next low. Down. New high that generates the next low. Down. As far as we're concerned, this motherfucker is in danger, though, right? This is still just a bear flag on the way down, much like all these guys were. Uber dangerous still. And that was what we looked at here, right? Bull flags on the way up. Bear flags on the way down. Because of the psychology of what goes on in them, right? When people were in the early part of the year, they weren't bullish yet. They were terrified. People were apologizing to their followers that they're such retards. They fucking killed everybody that follows them and then started to cry about it on Twitter. Remember that shit? Bunch of fucking pussies. Yeah, I know some of you watching my station, you're a bunch of fucking pussies. Anyway. Um, so when this comes out of here and you come into fucking the next season and these fucking pussies are still telling everyone that fucking Bitcoin's going back to fucking a thousand and shit, the uptrend begins. And so that negative sentiment is, is basically the shape of the bull flag, right? Oh man, yeah, see, I told you Bitcoin's gonna crash. Oh man, see, I told you Bitcoin's gonna crash. Oh man, see, I told you Bitcoin's gonna crash. Bro, Bitcoin's going to the moon. Fuck! That's how that works. See, that one's leaning the other way? That's a that bear flag. Because that's what sucks in the dummy who's not get super bullish. This is what sucks in the dummy who gets always constantly bearish. So bull flags basically screw people up who have a, a zoom problem. They're so close to the price. Oh yeah, that's over again. Recession, recession, recession. Oh, bro, that's bullshit. Manipulation, bro. Well, recession, recession. That's how you get that guy. He's too stupid to realize like the scheme of what he's in. He's so close to the trend, he can't see the wave structure. He's just like, oh, every time it turns over, recession. Oh, every time it turns over, recession. Fuck you, moon boys. Right? Those are idiots. And they do the same thing. They never pick up on the fact they're doing it. Uh, I wasn't too close to that. So that's what trends are made of, right? All the people who fucking doubted fucking crypto here finally had conviction here. So all your falling bear flags, right? That's what you get around. Yo, it's all season. Yo, it's all season. Yo, it's all season. <laughs> That's the fucking retard. And then you get the other side. This is the top, right? You get the, this is the top, guys, all the way fucking up the other side. Um, so it's just, the psychology is the shape of the fucking structures you see. Bear flags uh, capture, capture the um, sentiment. Uh, flip of the people on the wrong side of the tide as you come down. Bear flags basically have idiots waiting to buy every fucking moment here who don't understand the downtrend, and bull flags have retards shorting into it at every moment trying to predict the end of time. So when you look at something like the Dow Jones across 100 years, like EGI here, right? How many people are calling the end of the stock market for fucking ever, right? If anybody could actually use a moving average and fucking just understand trends, this is not your hardest call in history, right? Bull market, 10 years. Jeez. How much people call recession the entire way? You want to know what the definition of fucking stupid is? Saying the fucking thing over and over and over and being wrong and just continuing to fucking do it like you fucking have brain damage. It's a recession. Obama's a piece of shit. It's a recession. Obama's a piece of shit. Well, you know, if it wasn't the QE, we wouldn't be doing so good. Man, fuck that guy. He's, he's from Africa. He's a New York citizen. You got a passport? What a fucking joke. You know what? It's going to crash right in his face. See, I fucking told you, he's a fucking loser. He's ruining the country. Oh, my God. Well, you know that guy Trump? He's kind of crazy. You know what? Fuck him. That guy's a racist. Oh, my God. Look what's happening to the trade deal. Get it? Fucking the craziest thing in the world, bro. I've literally been telling people for a decade straight, please shut the fuck up. Please shut the fuck up. Please shut the fuck up. Has not worked at fucking all. Um, but 
So that's the psychology of a bull flag, right? All the doubt along the way, it's the easiest crime that any rookie technician could see. But the psychology that was fed to you by the news, the Robert Schillers, the mind fucked you out of the capacity to look at this objectively and realize, boy, that sounds really stupid. That's like the 17th version of me saying it's going to be a recession. You know, so perspective matters. That's why we say that. Uh, I got something for you on that. Hold on. Uh, 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 comic. Tell me when your jowls hurt, bitch. <laughs> Sorry. Well, my, my ears I, hurt. Yeah, my ears are fucking on fire. Um, that Dude, one. you have like little ass buds. Like, how do you, those hurt? No, ears? it's a fucking mask that's hooked onto the back of my ear. It's cutting the blood off in my face. Oh, yeah. um, These big ass headphones. Why are you hating? Stop hating. Stop. Hating. Stop hating. My ears um, hurt. Respect on the bitch. That was that. Spirit the bull back in there. Something else to be something. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, Holy shit. shit. Somebody's making it rain up here. Who the fuck? Damn. Booger probably, BTC right? Booger. Am I going to take off pieces of the clothing? Go ahead and do this. Sweet Jesus. Uh, okay, let me get a different screen switch. KJ, I'm going to audio works on this fucker too. Oh. We have to test everything live because it's the only one on air we can see. So KJ is on the bar. I'm still got you. Cool. All right. So there's a Schiller comic, right? So now keep in mind the chart we just looked at. And there's Schiller. There's a trend, right? Now look at it. What created the psychology of the wave? Schiller. CNBC and Schiller. That's what kept everyone on the wrong side. And that's how 90% of the people lose because there's no way for you to win with everybody. Keeping you on the wrong side and marking up your mispriced perceptions with the fear that was easy to put into you because of the, the constant badgering on minorities, making Obama easily Satan so people would believe in the fear that he sold, is tactical. You really believe these networks have millions of dollars and these people have the kind of information they do and they themselves can't tell they're saying the wrong thing repeatedly with checking? No, they know. It takes Google, right? Google Schiller. Why do you have a fucking Nobel Prize, you piece of fucking dog shit? You should turn that shit in, you fuck face. He's fucking <laughs> stupid, right? I have no respect for this man. He's a lying piece of fucking degenerate shit. You said the wrong thing for 20 fucking trillion dollars. So we should drive a truck in you. It's fucking crazy. He's yeah. ruined people's lives, without a doubt. And he's in Yale University teaching somebody else this load of dog shit that dismissed the biggest bull market in history. Can you imagine? He's in Yale teaching people how to be this fucking asinine for fucking seven straight years with no accountability. You wonder where the next set of jackasses are going to come out and tell people bullshit and kill them are? Check his classroom. So, yeah, these people don't know what they're doing. Does he look any smarter than an OG saying hava 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 in a crash? He just keeps saying the same thing. Same and this thing. is this is what he documented, right? People got mad that I, I documented people. This is markets. What do you think makes a psych- the psychology what it is to allow the structure to evolve the way it is, right? Markets are nothing but a graph that is the consensus of our own belief structures based on the fundamentals we have access to. Some people have access to this fuck face and call it fundamentals, right? All fundamentals are not created equally. And this is a huge thing that people don't understand. The graph is nothing but what we believe. Not all of us, not in the same direction, but it's a graph of everybody's belief structures. So. In crypto, it was nothing different, right? Crypto is it's the same animal. No, not that. When I showed you this, this is a really easy thing to understand. And of course, OGs don't want you to see stuff like this because then you're going to know that they're directly fucking you in the ass, either with incompetence or deliberately just because they can, because you're willing to listen and you haven't figured out they're criminal. Right? This, this is LTC winter. This is the crash of Bitcoin. Now, I've said this before, and I guarantee you didn't really pay attention the first time. So I'm going to show you again, right? These three accounts you see here, 200,000 followers, 70,000 followers, think about 30,000 at a time. What you see in this, there's a lot of moving part targets. At the very top of the market, I dropped LTC Winter, which was a fractal of Qualcomm that I thought it looked like it could be, and the emotional structures were there. So I gave warnings, I gave articles, everything I showed you was similar. Every single fucking market leader in the OG world is on the other side of the equation. But that's not the real problem. The real problem is this red box when you see these victims. These victims aren't what you think. So when you see something like this, right, I've had, uh, you know, charts hit 500 likes. By the time you hit three to 500 likes, you got like a half a million fucking impressions. Half a million eyeballs have seen that thing. And you work it out and you look at this fucking shit. Who are the guys who are the victims, right? Because remember, these guys are all points of value and whoever is looking to them for leadership, right, is likely dumber than the person they consider the point of value when these guys are all wrong. 
So they're really the point of value to see a shift that matters and really given this context. Who's following these guys and taking this horrible advice? Literally the worst trade since the internet bubble is this is trade right here. It's <laughs> other versions of the same guys. It's other guys with 50,000 followers agreeing with another guy with 50,000 followers, which means there's no one on the other side of the trade. They literally shoved through like six degrees of separation. The entire fucking market got shoved in here by the crypto OGs directly. Robert Schiller, right? Don't overlook it. That's why I keep track of it. This is who fucks you up your ass. And that's why they hate what I did, because it's their own words. It's not me saying bad things about you. It's me showing you exactly where your retarded ass thought Wall Street was dumber than a crypto club and billionaires would buy a $20,000 coin that came from pennies just now off of all these jackasses that are buying to a parabolic price that's moving at a speed that you know only FOMO type people are buying. This is the shape of price. This is literally who puts everyone into the market and overloads the trade, removes all the demand, so there's an absence of buyers, which allows any seller to rip you to shreds because once you get everyone in at once, in a local area where there's no more uh, demandees, everyone having the coin removes all buy pressure. So they literally actually kill everybody. Not sort of, kind of, maybe. There are people who lost their fucking financial lives here and their actual lives here. When I say they kill people, it's not like a you know euphemism. I'm being very literal. This will financially change someone's life. They will have less wherewithal when their their health changes, family members' health changes, and they will never be heard from because they won't have the financial capacity to let you know they just got raped by these people. So they go away without a word. And all that's left is more victims coming in who don't know what's happened to the last set of people from the last cycle. So I keep track of history, and if you cannot dodge it. If you send people into this, this is a singly worst fucking trade. Since the dot-com bubble blew up, relatively speaking, you clashed over 90 fucking percent, all coins fucking sum to dust, most of it. And this was not been hoddle, 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 hoddle. I'm so sorry with some fucking idiot guys. Boom. You can be as pissed as you want. Facts matter, bitch. And if your name is fucking pointing at the top of the market, well, I literally told the whole planet at the exact same moment, watch the fuck out. Careful, peeps, if you haven't taken some profits off the table, we could be in for a Litecoin winter next. Qualcomm crash that unfolded to the exact letter of the Qualcomm crash. It is the singly most accurate fucking technical call done in public <clears throat> ever. And what did crypto do with it? Delete it and then tell you to hollow some more and kill you again. What do you think that's about? Helping you make money or fucking making sure they hold a position that you don't fucking know is what it is? These are bad people, period. Anybody who do this and fucking pretend they didn't do it and call the level of financial devastation they did, they're bad people. And you know, bad good is subjective, but the quest question, you think you think Trav, Rogue, and, and Luke were short here? No, they're idiots. They were wrong. They're just wrong. They're just wrong and stupid. And had a bunch of people that didn't realize it was stupid following when falling right into it. No, these are morons. They're terrible. They're on the wrong end of everything. You can grab them the whole fucking time they crypto that's the worst trade is ever. That's why Trav's account went dead pretty much from there for fucking like half the way down. Remember, he stopped tweeting. Right, yeah. he was fucking, he got wrecked. He wrecked everyone that was following in all his rooms too. All of them did. They killed people, bro. I had fallout from these dudes coming to me telling me what fucking happened. I can't show people because their faces in some of these messages. I'll read one to you. Um, it's the dude lost his whole fucking house, his wife, his business, everything, bro. People wrote me crazy DMs. They're all Facebook, so they have the dude's face, and I didn't plan to cut out their faces yet. I don't want to do that. Um, I'll prop some. I'll put you on that screen. I can grab one maybe from Google where you can't see it. But you see, that's what I want today. It's just like, holy fuck. Uh, let's go here. Let's see what that it's pretty bad, man. Uh, I think I'll find it that fast. But I, I had what I was reading today. If I can bring it to the screen, you have shit. Like, read this. Like, I'm like, I get some reason, like, can you help me? Can you show me something? I'm like, bro, you're so, so fucking mentally devastated. You wouldn't be able to hear what the fuck I'm saying to actually act on it. Like, once you suffer that level of loss, your mind is so completely fucked up. Like, here's this one guy. Um, I put another box over the stage real quick. This is the kind of people who are the victims. So there's real people. And unfortunately, I find them after, and they're mentally so devastated, they have no capacities. You're not going to hear from them in mass. You won't know what happened. 
and they walk away without a fucking sound. It's like when a child falls into a pool, you think they splash around a lot. When my son is two, he fell into a pool. Kids actually make no sound. They'll hold their breath in panic and go sinking straight to the bottom, and you wouldn't know what happened. That's how kids get found at the bottom of like cruise ship pools. They don't make any sound. It's the exact opposite. This is the same thing. These people go away completely like head down, destroyed, and don't have the capacity to make noise because they're financially wrecked. Um, so this right here, I love this dude over here. Um, so this guy wrote me, I hope his name's on the right. Okay. Look at this letter. This is so fucking, this is like, if you don't have any like compassion for people, then this won't matter to you, but this is fucking terrible shit. I hate getting stuff like this. And this was like a post of like whatever kind of said notifications. This is probably some chart or something whenever I posted it and he replied to the comments. Oh man, I wish I'd found you a long time ago. Lost all my life savings like a fucking idiot. One year and 50k just for evaporated and hauling and bad trades. Nine year marriage is gone. Fuck. I can't believe how stupid I am. Can't even explain to you how this shit is making me feel. Anyway, can I join your group? After he's lost 50 Gs, you can't think straight if that's his life savings, you know? He's mind fucked. And everything I hear is about managing emotions. He's in a terrible state and now he's desperate. That's the worst point at which to fucking try to save yourself. You're gonna make a fucking terrible decision. I can't save you in that position. You're a mind fucked and I know it. Um, I blew up, I've blown up my credit card, so maybe you know, only in December, but I really wanted to learn with you. So he can't, he, his credit card's dead and wants to pay to learn with me anyway. I'm not gonna accept this. This is just another bad financial decision. You're not in a mind state and you don't have disposable capital either. You're fucking wrecked. And not that I don't have compassion for it, but like, look at where he's at. And it was because the people were fighting him, you know. Um, they say, never, they say, uh, I bought my credit cards so maybe only in December, but I really wanted to learn with you, man. Never seen this kind of precision thing. And please don't make fun of me. It's not. I felt horrible to see this, you know. Jeez. Uh, fuck, man. Grown, a grown man crying here. I was devastated. Never felt so dumb in my whole life. Thanks for being so honest and upfront. This whole crypto thing is a bunch of scammers. Keep the great work up. Sorry for this long message, blah, blah, blah. This is like, you know, I can't even help him. I mean, Jimmy, he's on credit cards that are blown out. He can't even afford. He has no working capital. He's lost his whole shit. I have other worse ones than this. And um, one guy said he listened to Crypto Man Ran and hit his money in BTC for his company during a legal situation. And then BTC killed him and wrecked his company. And he lost the company and the money. So Damn. I know the backend stories of who these people killed. And these are the faceless victims that these motherfuckers are out here fucking like posting dog shit for likes. These are fucking horrible people. But the fact is that all the people sit around like cheering their fucking shit posting and allow them a space in the market, enable them to kill people like this. Which means the people that they're fucking inside their following are bigger pieces of shit than them and fully deserve the wreckage they're taking. That's a perspective. Mm. That was a tangent I didn't see coming, but okay. Yeah, that shit is heavy, man. That shit's crazy. It makes you feel fucking like that because you want to help them like, I know right now your emotional state from what you wrote me, and bro, there's nothing I can tell you that's going to come in through that emotional lens in a way you can use. Mm -hmm. I, uh, in real estate, I was a foreclosure flipper for a long time. I pretty much just lend on it. At this point, spreads are really fucking bad down here. Somebody asked me, do I have interest in real estate? Um, the spread between like distressed property prices and the retail market, which is like where you know foreclosure flippers make money, has been compressed to something crazy. You know, you're when you're operating at mail, which is maximum allowable offer. You're trying to basically get all in, all costs, rent, renovations, clothing costs, and have thirty cents equity spread on the dollar. There are people out here running around playing, you know, playing ball at fifteen to twelve percent equity spread, bro. That's so fucking risky. It's crazy. So. The retail market's a little oversaturated on that. Uh, there's a really compression to the spreads for like, good deals. But they have, our asset prices are still rising. So right now, like the better place to be in is to be a creditor. Because as a creditor, I don't have to manage rent. And I can fucking, uh, I have rights to the property ahead of the owner. And I don't have to deal with the uh, property maintenance. So it's a, a better position to be in and deal with the fucking nightmare of each individual property owner. I think uh, being a lender in this kind of point in the cycle is smarter. So that's what I do. Um, Let's see. Oh, yeah. Speak to that's the same light as Pizza Burger. Okay, I'm catching up. Anything else good that came up? That was a lot of stuff, boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Somebody said you picked through about three edibles deep. Bitch, what you snacking out of it? shot, man. <laughs> what happened? I saw a shot. Oh, it's 3 a.m. When the fuck did that happen? Yeah. Oh, well. I'm just getting started. 
been here since 8 a.m., dude. I mean, 8 p.m. You, you remember my stream this morning is at fucking like 5 a.m. Then the market opens. Yeah, bro. Hey, I'm back. And I was sick as fuck all day. Yeah, you don't have two little ass kids, though. I have one slightly larger one, and I have many slightly. other kids. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, you got other kids. You got a whole bunch of kids. <laughs> uh, take it literally, folks. Yeah, yeah CDOGs right are gonna kill people. If you've ever seen the fucking stories of the people that they fucking victimized, that's one. I've got buckets of the really awful stuff, really personal, really Don't hard check to check it out. Shut up. What happened? <laughs> not, not you. Well, dumb money doesn't all arrive on the same day. So, yes, can the sentiment go from recession to recession to like, I think the market is bullish? Well, there's gonna be a lot of people along the curve to get in here for all of the local possible demand needs to, to arrive. So, in, 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 Fourth quarter uh, 2017, there were people who you consider stupid making money because there's even dumber people coming in on the wrong side. Once everybody comes in on the right side, though, you exhausted the main deed, then the market is saturated. So it isn't an instant thing. You know, it's a relative thing. There is some dumb money in the market, but newer dumb money makes old dumb money look relatively smarter. If markets are going to be rising and have exponential growth of demand deed, then you're going to fucking make the old dumb money a minority position in the market and the new dumb money the majority. So a sentiment meeting and going, that guy said he's short, I'm going to buy, is not so simple. It requires a context to the dumb money, if you understand what I said. Um, take a little folks. Yeah. 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 All right, let's see anything else good. That's a lot, man. You guys, this thing, I was hoping the corner can be fucking silly as fuck. You guys had me fucking doing an econ class in this shit. <laughs> I don't mind. I love going to that stuff. It's just great. You guys run some shit off that? It's time for fucking uh, gauntlet fun. <laughs> we'll come back to Litecoin in a minute. I need a minute. Okay, just got to rest his jowl. What up, KJ? Ugh. How's the jowl? They hurt me. You can get one of these. Yeah. So, are you guys taking all that? Because I speak kind of fast. So does everybody get all, get their head wrapped around that stuff? Let's take a catch of what else you guys said. So that was like a lot of shit you covered. You covered. So that happens, yeah, it happens in any market. All markets at the same time. Humans are in every market. It's not a different human to trade in stock versus Bitcoin. People are people, bro. Everybody does the same shit. Uh, that's me, though. I've got more weight, huh? Uh, uh, question regarding Elliott Way's long count in BTC. Would you count BTC top to 20K? More important question is Kazanomics is flying shit about Elliot Way. <laughs> Don't use those things, bro. You're going to die. I've seen one guy ever in crypto that can even remotely use those things. It's just garbage. It forces you into a really subjective state of mind, and you see a lot of hindsight recounts to try and make it fit. Price is really dynamic, you know, and the logic behind Elliot Way is not totally ridiculous. Um, it's you know, way within wave logic. It makes sense. But price isn't as mechanical as Elliot Way tries to fucking, you know, uh, keep it with it. Um, the same structure of prices occurring in every scale of time interwoven into itself. So price is like expanding and contracting dynamically through time frames with us with the same structure. That requires a whole different kind of analyst to keep uh, keep centered in front of you. Something that we've developed a, a logic to to see. And it's what kills Elliott Wave decisions is that they don't understand the dynamic of price. We call it M wave, multi-dimensional wave. Um, the wave expands and contracts through time frames with the same wave logic that you know is in all time frames. It's one behavior all time scale. Keeping context of that because it's like a moving optical illusion with a price is fractal, that, that, that takes a bit of effort. Um, talking has not Did you see Google quantum computing? I did. Don't know enough about it to give you any convenience on that. Um, Berger is really the AI fucking uh, you know, specialist of the crew, and he, uh, he knows his shit on that. He's a doctor in AI and robotics and stuff like that. So he can tell me not robotics to AI. Um, when we have him, he'd be the guy to talk to about, you know, what the reality of what is a quantum supremacy really means. I don't really have uh, any general idea if it's like something we worry about now, or, you know, if like the encryptions or whatnot, or if it's just a fancy term. So I don't have anything to say, I don't talk about it. Um, that's good, sir. Oh, that's something you guys should always fucking, you know, respect is that if somebody doesn't know something, don't have them. 
I don't know what I'm talking about, but I just like think that's a fucking idiot. And then you have somebody tell you, man, I have no idea, but right when he says the word but, you punch him right in his fucking mouth. Like, don't let him finish the next <laughs> sentence. Like, just shut the fuck up. Right there. Shut the fuck up. Alright. Can, can you take a look at that? Caterpillar? Okay, I try to bring him up. Don, respect on the bits. Holy shit. Fact that I dropped the 10 stacks. Did y'all see the thing that came on the screen for that? <laughs> MJTA. <laughs> yeah, that's just fine. <laughs> Respect. Dude, you guys are fucking off the chain, Fractal. Uh, it was yeah, it was kind of fast, sorry. Like, when I get into stuff, I speak kind of quick. So, I know some of you aren't from the States or English speaking countries. I have no problem repeating it. So, if I ever go too fast and you have a hard time understanding, please slow me down. I'll gladly go over it again. Thank you, my back. You're going to run this whole thing back at 10x? Shut up. Somebody said they've been watching my streams at like 2x to save time. What the fuck is that? You running my shit in the 2x, you better fucking take it all in. The base concept of LA Wave is real, but yeah, it's bullshit when you try to fit it right. And so, yeah, the base concept of LA Wave is real. Exactly right. Um, do I have something for that? I think I do. Damn, if I could use the fucking keyboard to stitch on, oh my god. I tried to drive the car the other day <laughs> with those on. <laughs> and so they don't articulate exactly like the human hands, and grabbing the steering wheel is a real motherfucker. And all we can think, you know, I can think in my head is like, man, Florida man <laughs> kills family of six driving with infinity gauntlet. So I put an end to that. <laughs> it's like the recipe yeah. for a horrible story. Not a good story. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna say it's a racing wheel too. So I couldn't yeah. like fucking hold it. Yeah. Um, I think I have an elite way of thinking that will help you. Let's see. Yeah. Middle-aged gentleman wearing toys on hand. <laughs> Middle aged retard <laughs> fucking slams his telephone post because he's trying to fucking snap his fingers. <laughs> Don't hate. You would do it too, goddammit. <laughs> no, I run around in the dark in this house with both gloves on, just fucking shining lights in the wall. I love these things. <laughs> fucking awesome. Villain from 90s movies. Dude, the best thing to creep up on fucking Ivy in the dark when she passed out and fucking just close it on you. She hates this shit so much, bro. Alright, Elliot snap. Uh something's not happening with the folder. What's going on here? Oh damn it. Something's happened with my uh program with the charts in it. Oh man. Alright. <clears throat> don't have that. SDL says I read an article about stock companies announcing a buyback. Then when the stock pumps, the main shareholders sell millions of dollars in stock, and most times the company doesn't even do the buyback. How is that legal? Um, I, I you had to show me specific examples. Um, they're pumping it with like buyback announcements. A lot of guys are buyback and the share and the, and the uh, executives are selling directly into it. You know, people have assumed that the market's only fueled by buybacks and you know um, some kind of scam. But the reality is that like your your monetary base has been expanding the entire time, and with low yields in the market, like super low rates. Uh, the the, cost, the risk of doing new ventures is really low. This is the best time for capital investment. So when rates are low, people spend. Because like putting automation into a business, finance it for fucking nothing now to try it out. So it brings down the cost of implementation. So you know, also when you're, you're going to buy back shares and you know, uh, credit costs are lower, it's a good idea. Everything that you're seeing right now is really what happens when you have low rates. You, you see a melt up in asset prices to offset risk uh, in other substitutes like treasuries. So you bring down, like I said, sovereign uh, sovereign debt yields. You're going to you know, shoot asset prices all over the board and risk uh, risk assets through the ceiling, and that's what you see. There's not really, you know, people are trying to justify that some kind of scam scam why asset prices are going higher, and there's not. People just really didn't understand central banking, or understand fractional reserve lending, or, or understand rates and yields and asset prices. And that's what I'm telling you. There's a reason that I've managed to call the entire market correctly for fucking uh, ten straight years. Is because I actually understand the mechanics of the back end of the market and what makes asset prices what they are, and in terms of one another. I didn't get lucky for a decade, and everyone else has been cheated by the Fed's manipulation. You're always having a really tough time saying, "I don't know how fucking any of this works," and this isn't my fucking expertise. And you keep on trying to force your opinion on top of it and make it fit. That's fucking cheap behavior. Stop doing that. Just learn to admit when you're wrong. You know, you just end up looking ridiculous in front of somebody who knows the answer, right? There is no fucking nefarious plot. You just didn't get it. And there's nothing wrong with that, but if you never admit it, then there's something wrong with that. Uh, I can't get this stupid thing up. It's fucking, um, it fucking crashed. Uh, let me get it. Might be a sign. Yeah, we're at an hour ten. <laughs> hey, <dude, shut laughs> <up. laughs> Always hate. It's hate, man. Hate. 
Uh, thoughts on Amazon appealing the Pentagon decision? Microsoft? They should. Trump said he'd fuck them, and they have a better fucking cloud infrastructure, and they got screwed. It's clear that Trump affected the deal just to screw them over. They took a subpar product because he's playing games, he's manipulating Ukraine, he's a complete criminal. You should ask questions. It's fucking obvious that he's fucking around everything. So since U.S. markets are in a long-term bull market, for long-term trading, for example, multi-year time frame, <clears throat> is there any methods such as waiting for a breakout or pullback or just jump in at current prices or dollar cost average? So we just talked about, like looking at the trend in VChain, that should answer your question. Go back to that part and watch how we said to look at like finding risk and participating in something that's in motion. I explained, I answered that exact question just moments ago. All right, what else you got? Five in real time? I think I've caught up to real time. Do you do refis on DRR? No. I was a mortgage person over a decade ago. Sorry, the month of North. Saw that press the rewind button when stream is over. Yep, you can look that up. I explained exactly how to participate in something. Don't worry about like how far it's got to go. And you know, you're defining risk in a trend structure that you you you've got some rule metrics that say this is a trend. It's in motion. Okay, now that it's in motion, I'm going to participate in the next reasonable uh, location that I can define this and, and enter. And I showed you an idea of it looking at a shop wave. So go back and take a look and you can see it. How do you price currencies in terms of each other? Very, very complicated. Um, so currencies require a, a kind of an asset web to look, oh, hold on, my LA thing popped up, is this working? Okay. Oh, you fucking piece of shit, stop it. I don't know what it's doing. Dude, what the fuck is your problem? Okay, I'm not sure if this is what you're doing. Okay, I can do this. Uh, how do you price currencies in terms of each other? I mean, you're looking at currencies, euro dollar trading, you know, one versus the other. Um, I think you're trying to probably ask, how do you define value between fiat? And that's really tricky because you have to define like, you know, some metrics to, to put them in the correct basket. Uh, you look at things like the yen, right? He has no yield to him. He's a risk off currency and he's part of an export nation. So that currency tends to fucking underperform when markets are rising because he's a he's the currency you borrow from with the lowest interest rate to buy anything with yield above it, S and P five hundred, anything else. So he's weak in risk on markets. Australian dollar is heavily tied to commodity prices and has a has a you know, one of the higher interest rates of the G seven currency. So there's a, a risk uh, sorry, there's a carry trade potential between him and yen. So he won't perform like the yen in risk on markets, you know, because the yen is the guy you're going to sell and you're going to seek a return on something that pays better, Aussie him. Uh, Canada is heavily tied to oil, to that commodity. Aussie less, more to gold. So currencies require a couple other metrics to understand and, you know, looking at their rates, looking at like their regionalities, currencies tend to perform in geographically. You can notice that like the Canadian dollar, Mexican peso, US dollar will tend to be highly correlated as a regional fucking basket of currencies, much like the franc and the euro and Czech and uh, krona and all those guys are. And then you have, the, of course, the Pacific Rim, New Zealand and Aussie will tend to you know, have a higher degree of correlation just on a regional basis. So that's kind of a, a bit of info to get you started. Um, yeah, all these assets and all these interest rates and bond markets basically hell. Have calls and Starbucks is firing tomorrow. Good luck. <laughs> um, what was the other thing? So, was, oh yeah, so somebody asked me Elliot thing. So, this isn't like. Let's see. Um, where's that window at? Chart side. No, chart side. Um, so, this thing, you know, Elliot Wave is really looking at something like uh, this guy's response, right? You're looking at your. You know, one, two, three, four, five, A, B, C, correction, something like that. I don't actually know it. So this is generally what waves move like, right? And they do it in every single time frame. You know, the reality is, is that like what's going on down here, this entire like in the noise you see down the bottom row of the bull and the very bottom row and you see all this resolution is waves and pumps. This guy right here, uh, I don't have a way to draw on this, but this guy right here, can you ever see the hand thing that I'm moving around the chart? Is that visible? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that structure right at the bottom is exactly like this. And so is this. It's just a series of the same thing together. But 
price isn't really that uniform. You go looking at it, it's not so mechanically structured. You go, oh yeah, it's clearly in this resolution and it's doing this count right now. Elliot Tishan, because in real time your mind's fucking with you, skew the price emotionally. And so the count they fit to it, they're constantly refitting it because they're they're getting mind fucked by the price in real time. Much like people are in bull trends where after this big tide is done, you're like, oh, it's obviously a bull market, but you couldn't see it. You know, you couldn't see this thing the whole time. And it's like, literally, really, it's a, a really basic moving average. And anybody who says, I know what an uptrend is as a moving average or wave structure should have got this. But they can't. And in real time, too, you know, you get here and you're like, okay, this must be the beginning of the ABC correction. So I'm going to go ahead and re-engineer everything to fit so that this is it. That's a lot of what fucks Elliotitians up. They try to fit the fucking count to what they see now. And if your bias has fucking got any bit of you fucking fucked up, you're not going to do it right. And then to save face, you're going to keep on trying to recalibrate. You see all the Elliot Tishan out there always recounting, recounting, recounting. They have no reliability with what the fuck they do. Um, but the logic that's underlying Elliot is not ridiculous. It's the application and the way people go about it that is. So that's pretty good. All right, hour 30. How are you guys doing? KJ, how you Dal doing? Yeah. KJ, Dal? I think I'm done. Think you're done? Yeah. <laughs> Three in the morning. I think we'll wrap it there. It's pretty good. We covered a lot of shit. Um, did I cover Litecoin? I think I did. I'll do the quick one. a lot, man. There's a lot. I gotta watch this again. Cover a lot. Yeah, that was like the it's wordiest really, one I think really we ever a had. A lot of good bro. stuff. Yeah. So I'll put the Litecoin thing up and cover because they're only asking me the second time I didn't make it to crypto, I wouldn't make it there. So, Litecoin, um, oh man, I had a chart up for you to do this, and it's not going to show up, is it? Let's see. All right, I can fucking do it somewhere else. Um, oh wait, it's still not work. Okay, good, it'll work. Okay, so, looking at Litecoin, if you remember Litecoin, Litecoin is, the, the Litecoin winter chart is a fractal of um, there's BTC grind and angle. Okay, they talked about that. Um, real quick. Thank you. Woo! That's a lot. I had too much. Busy, busy. I had needed. Yeah, the BTC. This guy. Not crazy, we'll take up. You can see. That's not it either. Crazy. Oh, yeah. This is actually a projection I made in uh, Soldier. So, you shockwave on Club of Deck. Oh, what the heck is that? That hurts a lot. What the fuck? Ooh, so painful. The projection I made in Winter Soldiers um, on the shockwave, right? He could either pull back, he could run a high shockwave, there's these two choices. So he ran a high shockwave. And let me zoom in, it's so big, I can't see. So again, if you guys remember fractal formation, this is fractal formation, right? The high structure, then the dip that erase everybody. Then you guys see what he's going to do, right? Is he going to come in here and fucking possibly dip in and come out, or dip in hard and come out? Kind of watching what he could do. So. You know, structurally right now, we got back to the zone. That was a key area for this thing on the way down. That's probably the, a decent spot to watch. If he gets towards like, you know, 8160 or just above that in this zone and comes out of it, that might be it. But uh, let him do it and prove it first. Don't fucking be a jackass and keep standing in front of him trying to call lows. Let him prove it and define risk and don't get yourself killed. Um, so yeah, then Litecoin is like what that. Litecoin. So there's Litecoin and Litecoin side by side with Qualcomm. Let's put them out the old school fractal. And so the original Litecoin chart is actually done in three days. All right. And so this is the Qualcomm cycle for him. He was done on the uh, weekly. Oh, man, that's fucking flash of that, man. 
Why are all these on? That's what you should have. Why the hell is that on? I don't have any of them on. Because it's off. Okay, let's go here. Fucking to death. Okay. All right. Oh my God, that movie. Got it. All right. So this is the original Litecoin winter call. This is All right. And that's the little bull flag. At the end of a crash, that's the little bull flag you see. That's what you care. Is your accumulation markets and stuff. So I've got little drawings on it, but for the most part, it's still attacked, right? And if you look at it, Litecoin is still running the fracture. Still doing it. Yep. Right? Goes all the way down. Even had the low zone correct on where he'd be. Bounced in there. Turn of the time, December 27, 2018. Winter season ends. Go back into a spring. You get a pump. And now we fade. And this is important because, you know, many people in the market believe that this is the crash cycle. But the reality is it's not the whole crash cycle. That's what we were talking about in the last show is that the crash cycle is a real cycle that's much larger. And all of the publications, all the works that have written on it have failed to notice it. I've actually uh, used this for five years and realized that, you know, all of the, all of the people speaking on uh, the emotional cycle of price literally do not fully understand. It. No one. So the fact is everyone used the stock market from 2000 to do the chart and looked at it that way and they focused just on this large spike. But this is the crash cycle chart and it's still going, which means there's more story to this than just a spike and down. And that's what's really crazy. And no one actually understands the chart really well. Um, over here on this screen, this is the BNB oil fractal, and this is a real crash cycle. This is the whole thing. It's not what you think. It's not just a spike in the dump. It's the spike, which we call in my room. This is the arc of perception. This is where everybody believes, right? And this is the winter of discontent. You already know who the fuck that's for. This is the reflation trade, and that's the backbreaker. When those happen, that's when you have the chance for fucking excess. Like things like this, right? You can see it here in, in, in a BNB coin. Wrecks everybody in the arc of perception and winter of discontent. Reflation trade gives them false hope and then fuck off. Now it can pump. That's a structural thing. See the stock market? That's the real class cycle. That's the whole of it. The parts in all the books stopped here. But everybody forgot about the part here. The reality is that the market will check you one more time, psychologically annihilate you, and then a 10-year bull market can happen and you won't fucking touch it. See it? Yep. That's the real crash cycle. That's the whole of it. <clears throat> so that was actually the move here, and that's what you're looking at. The market's still in the cycle. It's not done. And people not understanding it, like all these crypto fucking plebs that go around running on that sheet that don't know what they're talking about are going to keep killing people because they don't know what they're fucking doing. If I didn't show you this, they'd never figure it out either. They're fucking clowns. Make sure you remember that. It's the first place you see open it. when you see this somewhere else. When you see this somewhere else, just remember. Any fucking knockoff parts that they don't know how to use it. Doesn't even matter if I show it to you, they can't use it. They're fucking dyslexic. So this is EOS. EOS has come down and he's done the cycle. Crash cycle, housing boom, and then backbreaker, right? Just like the stock market, right? The internet bubble, the crash internet bubble, the housing bubble, and then fucking housing Armageddon. That's the whole cycle. So if you're gonna be in a place for an offering season, this had to happen first. So now that that's happened, this is the time to kind of pay attention. And this is only the dollar market. Remember, BTC dominance has got to crack before you're actually earning fucking BTC using Bitcoin. So some things to keep in mind about it. But you're in a range now where things are interesting with some of these guys. Guys like Neo BTC, Neo, uh, where's he at? Binance. And these guys have done some interesting stuff. All right, they've all gone down and there's a crash level. There's your housing, housing boom and then your crash. You can see it, right? Every fucking word. This is the real cycle. Man, why don't you tell me I'm not on the chart, fool? <laughs> I'm going over charts and I'm on the wrong screen. <laughs> All right, I meant that. This is uh, Neo. And there's Neo next to Qualcomm. And I just had up uh, EOS, my bad. So there's your overall crash cycle, right? There is uh, EOS. There's your internet bubble. There's your fucking internet crash, housing boom, fucking Armageddon. And like I said, you need that before you can really do anything. That's the actual cycle you're following. Remember, this is the greed cycle. Gold is the fear cycle. It's a different version of the same thing. 
And the fear cycle, the greed cycle, we're looking at it. Remember, if the greed cycle, the original class cycle chart in all the books is based on Cisco systems, well, Cisco systems is not a business. They're still alive. So what the fuck is the rest of the chart? Common sense would say, you should go back and check the class cycle and see, does it fucking just stop there? No, it didn't just stop there. It did something else, right? It crashed and it did something fucking else. That's the original class cycle chart, by the way. Cisco systems is it. So what happened after the crash? Nobody knows. And that's the fucking funniest part. So there is more to the story. So yeah, the way they the way they present it, they would lead you to believe that the same exact thing happened twice. Over and over, yeah. This market just doesn't cycle, cycle, cycle. It's just it pops up like a heartbeat, and it's all that happens. But the overall full psychological story, what it takes to make sure you never come back, is that any fucking hope that emerges here, they're gonna stomp the fuck out of your soul, and then we can fucking leave your ass sitting there calling a session, a session, a session, a session. Fucking yeah. The whole time saying all, all, all seasons of me. All seasons of me. Right. <laughs> It'll that's, never happen. That's how you got this many people on the wrong side of things. That's the real crash cycle. And now you have a structure that is a much larger version of this. That is the real, real cycle. And you think I'm kidding? Like this is literally all around you too. You've fucking seen it many times. I've shown it many times. Right? Here is a uh, oh man, I brought some crazy shit on that. Um, chart top. Oops, wrong window. Right, so there's gold. And gold version of it, right? And he gets lucky 13, and then he launches a much bigger version of the original parabolic. You have to have the original crash first, then the backbreaker, get the fuck out, and then you won't touch it. That's how the actual cycle works. That's the full one. This is the fear base, this is the fear cycle, and I showed you the greed cycle. But these are full cycles. That's why I knew what this would do and knew what the end of him was. I knew all the bears, all the gold bugs would die because they would miss the bull market of the NAS because it's arcing into that. But this is actually the whole cycle. It's not written about anywhere. This is a uh, first of its kind presentation about it here. This is the true crash cycle in all of it. You can see it in gold. You can see it in fucking BB. And you may see it in oil. And you can see it in NASDAQ. You can see it in multiple asset classes from shit coins to fucking commodities. Like gold to fucking risk assets like stocks. And that, I think, is a great place for us to probably wrap it up. So, that is a lot of info. You guys, I put me in. So, so, fuck Robert Schiller. If you want to go to a real podcast, class, bitch, this is it. Bitch, I am the book. I am the book, motherfucker. Because <laughs> you thought I was playing. Um, so, let's see what else you got. Yeah, it's definitely packed. I was like trying to have this, like, man, we're trying to sit there and like chill out. You guys ask me some college level fucking shit. Bro, fuck. What does this look like? Do I look like a typical educator? Have you not been paying attention to what this is? Do you not know what I do to you, boy? (laughs) As long as there are those who remember what it was, there are always those who can never accept what can be. Pay attention to the price going forward. Stop dealing with hindsight TA. It doesn't do you any fucking good. I can't say that fucking shit. Oh, I lost my audio. Fuck. Any more questions before we wrap it up? We're about to dip. You guys have a good time. You guys learn a lot of stuff. No more questions. Too many questions! <laughs> it's enough. Okay, dude, ears in his jowls, man. Ears in his jowls. Somebody get that guy some fucking jowl cream or whatever the fuck you need for that shit. So I'll give me some real headphones. You use them, yeah, you use over air headphones. So you guys learned something new, right? Brand new craft cycle. World's never seen. Ta da! <laughs> <laughs> I was about to try to get last show, KJ stopped me. I told him to show it the altar literally in a crazy place. And he's like, oh, my fucking jowl, man. I'm like, that's why you said you're too old to begin to trade him, motherfucker. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All season does recover cool session to session. Uh, fear and greed, full cycle. Yup. The motherfucking reptile, bitches. Seen it here first. Decision TA. Edutainment, motherfuckers. All right, um, wait, we're not doing that. I gotta do one more thing. You know this. Oh. One more thing. Too many questions. One more thing. Okay. <laughs> KJ's literally melting down on the side of this fucking thing. 
<laughs> like, I'm shot, bro. I see it. I've got moments. You got moments, Kaden. Probably inside of 60 seconds right now. You just gotta be patient with me. Uh, nah, Jow Cream won't save me. Jow Cream? Is this such a thing as Jow Cream? I'm, I'm, <laughs> in full, I'm in full depression right now. <laughs> Yeah, uh, why do you gotta be like that? It's all over. It's all over. Oh, my phone's been crazy thing. Hold on. Come on. Jow Cream. What does it sound? It sounds kind of pornographic. Jow Cream. That's true. Not sure what Jow Cream is, but don't fucking put any of it on. What is this thing doing? I can't backspace on this message? What are you doing? I'm gonna cut and paste something that won't work all of a sudden. Uh, what the fuck is going on here? Copy. What's the problem? Bro, what is happening with my fucking shit? Hold on, do this on me. Fucking cricket. You guys have to pay him on a five minutes or something. No. Couple KJ, he loves it. Trust me, he really does. He sounds like a really hard ass, but he loves the fucking, he loves the grass. No, I don't. <laughs> First 25, hit that link. And that's pretty Discord. Uh, so, always fucking know where you're exiting before you get into a trade, right? Define risk. You can always come back and try again. There's no one trade that's going to leave you behind. Take your time. Markets look at an interesting place where the typically seasonal strong part for crypto in November, December is. But let it prove itself first. Um, BTC, as you can see, pulling off Pleasure Jack needs some time to actually consolidate the structure. If you guys actually paid attention to the last set of videos that we did about this, he's not doing something totally abnormal. He saw what he should have Pleasure Jack and he could have a deep enough dive to retest where he came from. Um, the structure is not mirror imaging gold anymore, but it's still pretty damn close, you know. Uh, this is actually gold, and actually I have it right in front of me. <laughs> yeah, with, with gold, you had, a, you had a bull trap too, over here. Shabby spot is that. That's where we were looking for. When I saw it, I was like, oh, this looks like gold. So, yeah. I don't know what's going on. My fucking shit's getting crazy. When that shit popped up to like 9200, it looked very similar structurally to the gold bounce. Dude, my charge is moving on something right now. I think it's fucking that fun. So, Rektar, return to Judah. I hope you guys had fun. We did. Catch you on the flip, boys and girls. Later, everybody. Later. Welcome to Winternomics TV. Your stream will begin shortly.